Good morning. So just to let everyone know, remind everyone the calls are all being recorded. Um, we usually start about five after. If you could go ahead and add yourself as an attendee um, here on the weekly meeting, meeting minutes, that helps a lot. And we'll go going here in a little bit. Just a reminder to folks, if you could go ahead, and go to the meeting minutes and add yourself to the attendees list. And post it to YouTube. Should we get going, Frederick? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Excellent. Frederick, do you want to get going on the meeting or? Let's see, we may have lost Frederick. Um, You're very also, faint. To put on the uh, uh, the agenda onto uh, screen share. You're very faint, Frederick. You may want to step closer to your mic. And
Okay, so um, welcome to the Network Service Mesh meeting. We have this meeting every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific time. We also have a um, uh, we also have an Asia friendly meeting, which occurs every other week. Um, that particular meeting was last week and should be on next week. Uh, we also participate in the uh, in the uh, CNCF Telecom User Group, which occurs every um, first and third Monday at 8 a.m. and uh, Pacific time, and I believe 8 a.m. Uh, in uh, UTC time on, on, the, on the third week. We also participate in the uh, CNCF Network SIG, which occurs every Thursday. We uh, we also have um, yeah every every Thursday at eleven a.m. Uh, we have some uh, some new information in terms of uh, in terms of KubeCon where uh, KubeCon itself has been uh, rescheduled to uh, to August thirteenth through August sixteenth. Uh, we are in the process of organizing. Uh, uh, we are in the process of organizing uh, NSMCon and getting it all set up for that time period. It will be on August 13th. Um, we still have uh, we still have spots open for sponsorship for those who are interested. Um, ONES uh, uh, North America has also been rescheduled. Um, so that is uh, September 20th through. 29th in Los Angeles. Um, the ON, ONES Europe, uh, which is going to be in Antwerp, uh, was originally going to be, or is, has been postponed, and that's to be uh, to be determined. Uh, we do not have dates on that just yet. Uh, KubeCon, uh, Cloud Native Con North America in Boston is still in November 17th, 20th as of now. And so if anything changes there, then we will post it. Uh, we don't have any major announcements at this point. Um, so uh, Ashley, are you on the call so we can do the uh, social media? Yes, I am. Hi, everybody. As far as the last week in social media goes, we have gained on Twitter at least an additional four followers, followed an additional four accounts and had a total of 20 tweets and retweets. In those tweets, I've got a save the new date out for NSMCon, which is August 13th of this year, sent out general call reminders, promoted CNCF weekly webinars, got the video recaps out as well for those that are unable to make the meetings, also promoted the CNF testbed call, which happened yesterday, and we'll get um, a new save the date out for the next call happening on the 20th. Then as far as Linux Foundation and CNCF tweets, uh, we got the um, we got the new dates out for ONES North America happening at the end of September and then uh, and then tweeted about the postponement of the ONES in Belgium. Uh, also promoted some online cloud native summits that's happening at the moment, I think as we speak right now, promoted the LF training scholarship application as well as a CNCF wellbeing working group considering the times that we are living in now, thought that was pretty applicable. And then just some general retweets from Cisco and CNF testbed, uh, container related as well as um, telco and VNFs. So as far as LinkedIn, we gained an additional two followers, promoted the same original content that goes out through the Twitter account. And then the plan moving forward is to pretty much continue um, with the general podcasts and blogs out there and then start ramping up as we get closer to NSMCon and KubeCon in August. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. So, 
Um, in in terms of the uh, in terms of the main agenda, so I don't think we we don't have anything set at the moment, but there are some things that we want to discuss on the development side. Um, Ed, uh, do you want to uh, do you want to jump into that? Uh, sure. I mean, I can talk a little bit about what I've been sort of beating my head against the last week, which is um, getting a very simple pattern going um, in the command repos, <clears throat> where essentially we've got a single Docker file, but by selection of target, um, and if you just build the Docker file, you know, Docker build doc, you get what you expect, which is the runtime you're looking for. But <clears throat> if you use the, um, the target mechanism in Docker, you could get a test container that would run tests. Uh, or you could even get a debug container that would allow you to debug the thing. Um, and with a, a few magic knobs, you can twist if you'd like to actually copy the binary in from being built locally on your host rather than built in the Docker container. Because there are times, particularly when you're working cross repo, where you really, that's what you want, right? Because you're not going to be able to, if you have to, if you put a replace directive in that's looking for something locally on your disk, to go do the, that, then you're not going to be able to build it correctly in the Docker container. So you know that stuff has been going on. It ends up being a pretty smooth pattern, quite frankly, um, that makes it very, very, very easy to sort of poke at these commands uh, directly. So they have been sort of poking at that. Um, what are what are what are the folks, the folks, the people, people who've been working on this week? It's almost not hearable. We don't hear very well. Oh, sorry, is this any better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, weird. So my my microphone on my phone is working, but not not going over my my headset. So I'll talk directly into the phone. Um, anyways, so I have a um, so the cloud native zero trust uh, presentation that I uh, showed earlier uh, is, is something I'm continuing to to uh, fix up. But what I want to do is I want to more formally define and give examples of uh, of this work in action, and so. Uh, a significant portion of my time has been focused on uh, on getting that particular part um, up in, um, and uh, and ready and trying to clear my uh, uh, trying to try to clarify some of my thoughts around it and getting opinions from uh, from others on the on the approach um, and so uh, for me that's been uh, the majority of my of, of my of my time. Um, yeah, I think uh, um, we have some uh, some uh, work that's planned ahead as well that we want to try to that we want to try to tackle. Um, so we want to try to get um, uh, some more of the uh, identity and policy taken care of because. I was taking a look at what's necessary for people to run this thing in, in production. And we know, we know that it works from a, uh, uh, from a functional perspective because we've, we've already shown it work. And so one of the things that we want to do is we want to make sure that the, uh, that the identity and policy are, uh, are in very good shape. Like we have working identity and policy now, but uh, that's something that uh, we need to do our best in order to get right in order to properly ship this out. And I think one last um, um, one last part on that as well is in the in the long run. So this is not, not really a goal in the short term, but in the long term, we're going to uh, uh, we'll we'll also focus on making a lot of this stuff uh, significantly more easy to, to use. Like this stuff should be easy to do, to, to develop against. But we need to make sure that as an operator, it's uh, easy for for the operator to uh, to make use of. But uh, uh, right now, you know, uh, right now we'll continue to focus on getting this thing so that it's uh, capable to be run to be run in production. 
Uh, that's all that I currently have. Is there anything else that anyone else uh, that anyone else has? Cool. Well, if there's um, if there's nothing else, uh, let's go ahead and uh, and uh, can, uh, actually there is one other one other thing. Um, something to uh, to consider if there is something that you would like to present in uh, in this particular uh, meeting, whether it's a uh, whether it's a use case that you find interesting or uh, a problem that you that you see that, that you think needs to be solved, um, then. Uh, please add it to to the agenda, or come talk to me on Slack, and we'll see about scheduling uh, scheduling you in. Uh, and uh, with that, I don't have anything else, and so uh, it's sealed back uh, uh, forty minutes worth of time. And with that, thank you, everyone, and you all have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye.